Many material properties are obtained through measurements, expressions, and or vary widely depending on the interval. For these reasons, we will show you how to use interpolation, analytic, and piecewise functions to read in material properties from a table, define them via expressions, and define them via different expressions over different intervals. So here we have the busbar box tutorial model opened and solved. Let's create a new material so we can go through step by step how to define a function for a material. And I'm going to select a part of the geometry for this demonstration. It will be the box. So here is where we will use functions to define a temperature dependent thermal conductivity, pressure and temperature dependent density, and temperature dependent heat capacity. Please note that the functions we define in this video are not representative of any specific material and are used purely as an example. So we made these functions so that after we're done defining them and we plot them, that they are interesting and visually appealing to look at. So I'm just going to start with entering some arbitrary values for the other material properties. And I'm going to pull a function from another material, air, just to quickly define the dynamic viscosity. Now let's start off with defining an interpolation function for a temperature dependent thermal conductivity. You can add a function by either right clicking the respective property group node and then going under functions or by simply using the materials tab. In the settings window, we can change the label of the function as well as the function name. We recommend changing the function name so that it reflects the material property you are defining. Since we are defining the thermal conductivity, let's name it K. For the data source, we can either select table in which you just manually enter your data in the table provided, or you can load in your data using the file option. You can also do this from the load from file button below. So here I'm going to select a file and you can see the data for the table has been entered. The interpolation method determines how the software evaluates the function between the data points we provide. And the extrapolation method controls how the function behaves outside of our specified range of data. Changing any of these options, as you can see, will change the plot of our data. Lastly, you must enter the units for the arguments as well as the function. So here we have a plot of the temperature versus the thermal conductivity. And you can see now that interpolation functions are useful for when you have measurements of a material property at discrete data points. You can just enter in the data and then an expression is fitted to the data. Now let's define an analytic function for a temperature and pressure dependent density. For this one, let's change the function label to example density and then change the function name to row since we are defining the density. In the expression field, this is where we enter the equation for the function. And again, just to reiterate, this is an example function, so you can type in your own expression, whatever you want, right here as well. Then enter the independent variables or arguments of our expression. And again, specify the units for our arguments and function. Under plot parameters, we enter the range we want for each argument. Let's just keep it at a single value for the pressure and enter a wide range for the temperature. Now let's plot it. So here we have a plot of the temperature versus the density of our material. And you can see now that this is a great example of how analytic functions are useful for describing material properties of one or more independent variables. Lastly, let's define a piecewise function for a temperature dependent heat capacity. 
Let's change the function name to CP since we are defining heat capacity at constant pressure and enter temperature as the argument. Let's select none as the extrapolation method and let's add smoothing to the plot. For each cell in the intervals table, we enter the start and end interval limits along with an expression defining the function. Remember the intervals must not overlap and there cannot be any gaps between intervals. So I will select and add a file and you can see our first interval is constant for this range of values and for the second range of values, this function is applicable. Lastly, let's enter the unit for the function. So here we have a plot of the temperature versus the heat capacity. You can see now how this function type is useful if a material property has different definitions on different ranges of values. Now that we have finished defining the functions, we can enter the function names as well as the arguments as the value for each. With that, we have successfully used interpolation analytic and piecewise functions to define the properties for a material in the software.